youth of India, a source of positive disruption, or as they would say in Bollywood, we the youth of India, doom machale. It's my privilege to introduce our next speaker, writer and film director, Mr. Sanjay Gadvi. Mr. Sanjay was enchanted with Indian cinema from the time his mother took him for the screening of Ram or Sham when he was a year old. However, instead of joining the Film and Television Institute of India, Pune, he got onto the field early and on the sets as an apprentice under director Anand Balani. After seven years of persistence, Mr. Sanjay had his directorial debut with Tere Liye. The success of box office hits we all are familiar with, Dhoom and Dhoom 2, followed soon after under Yashraj Films. These films turned out to be very instrumental in establishing Mr. Sanjay as a director. He has since then produced with several leading, he has since then directed, sorry, with several leading productions. Besides filmmaking, Mr. Sanjay is very interested in academics and has plans to teach in film school. He has been a guest lecturer at the prestigious IIM Ahmedabad and IIT Kanpur. He has shared the stage with Nobel laureate Dr. R.K. Pachori and has been a mentor at several film schools in Mumbai. His topic for today is Bollywood, the provocateur for positive disruption. Mr. Sanjay, please. Hello, check. Good. Hi, good evening, everyone. It's uh, very late in the day to talk and try to wake everyone up. But uh, it's a great privilege and an honor to be standing here today in front of you all. And I would like to thank one person. If it was not for that person, I would not be standing here. Because seriously, if it was not for him, I really would not be here. I'd like to thank Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Seriously, I mean, I saw his films and I dreamt about films. I saw his movies and I wanted to be a film director. I became a film director because of the impact that the films that he acted in had on me. I went on to become a film director. I made Dhoom. And because I made Dhoom, I'm standing here today. So thank you, Mr. Bachchan. My sense of good and bad came from uh, the films that I saw. Values like courage, integrity, friendship, sacrifice, all that I got from the characters portrayed by him. Many times I feel that Mr. Bachchan is like the Dronacharya, you know, and I'm Eklavya. And I made a statue and I learned everything. And then when I made Dhoom, it was like my thumb, you know, I gave the Guru Dakshina and I paid back. But that's the impact that Amitabh Bachchan's characters had on me. Can Bollywood be a provocateur for positive disruption? My answer is no. So sorry to disappoint you all. Films in our country cannot change anything. Because in India, we do not watch films to imbibe. We watch films for what has come to be known as time pass. 
And the very clever filmmakers of our country have figured that out very, very long ago. So you'll have one of the most intelligent intellectual men like Shekhar Kapoor, a qualified chartered accountant, well-read, go out and make a film like Mr. India. What do you imbibe from that? Nothing. But believe you me, when you meet the man, he's probably the, one of the smartest guys around in the show business. So then the question is that can't all the sensible people, and there are many of them like Shekhar Kapoor in the industry, can't they go out there and make films that can bring about a change? The answer is they can, but they will not. Because at the end of the day, Bollywood is like any other business. And like every other business, it has to show profits. And this pursuit of profits is the excuse given by filmmakers like me, and we go out and make Doom. I don't know really what people imbibe from Doom. I mean, there are fast bikes on the streets, and I have to apologize to my wife every time a biker cuts my car and says, sorry, I'm responsible for that. <laughs> the RTO made a lot of money with the helmet rule. Motorcycles change, the shapes change, but we'll get into that later on. <clears throat> because we had only one intention when we made Doom, to entertain everybody. And the very sharp man that Aditya Chopra is, he had in his mind he's going to make, produce Doom 2 and Doom 3. And that Doom 3 will go on to make 500 crores worldwide. Money and profits, that's the main aim of Bollywood. And all filmmakers mostly. But in all impossible situations, like in the movies when the hero is stuck at the end and he has to save the heroine and get out of, of that exploding island, and we are all rooting for him to make it, there is always a secret passage out. Dhoom has taught me. My success has taught me. Yeah. The failures, they say failure is the best teacher. It will make you stronger. Bullshit. <laughs> Failure makes you angry, makes you bitter. Some of my films have failed miserably, really badly. Super flops. Everyone around me consoled me. It's okay, it happens. Tendulkar does not score 100 every time. You're a Tendulkar. Let the failure sink in. It will teach you. You must learn from it. The experience will teach you. You will be stronger. So I waited. Nothing happened. <laughs> I was anything but stronger. Failure did not teach me anything. Failure failed. That one thing that is there in people that makes them come back on their feet, everyone has that one special thing themselves. I, suddenly the thought came to me that I should look at my success in a different way. Because when success comes to you, you don't think much about it, you don't analyze it. You just gloat, you ride on it, you enjoy it, you, you slap a few people mentally, shut up, I made dhoom, you know. Bhai sahab, riksha khali hai, nahi, kyun nahi, maine dhoom bana hai, mere ko jane ka hai. So, but, but mostly success is not analyzed, especially in the show business. It's in the corporate world, you know, okay, why did this product succeed? It might be happening, but film succeed ho gaya, 200 crores, superb, damn good, I'm the greatest in the world. So Dhoom released August 27, 2004. The financial year ending March 31st, 2005 saw a 20 to 25% increase in the sales of motorcycles all over the country. Yeah, it's funny, but... <laughs> 
but the motorcycle owner companies are all laughing all the way to the bank. I take all the credit for that. You're really welcome. I mean, shocking how a film could have done that, you know. Now that is a secret passage out. You have to learn what it is. Dhoom was not an ad for bikes. It was just a film that was intended to entertain everybody. But the byproduct of it, films set trends. That is to be kept in mind. Films cannot change or bring about change directly. It's not going to happen. Let me give you an example. I'd gone to see Three Idiots for the second or the third time. And there was a family known to me watching the film. There was a father who I knew was harassing his son to become an engineer. Came out of the film and says, very good film, very good film, excellent. They should make like these films. So much sense there is in the film. Much better than the other rubbish that is being made. And two days later he was arguing with the son. No, you have to be an engineer. So, but dad, I want to be an artist, I want to be a photographer, I want to be this, no. You will be an engineer. So, with the best of intentions, Raj Kumar Hirani was not able to... But the thing is that if, if I think what Raju might be thinking, is a dear friend of mine, what he must be thinking at home is that if out of the 350 crore rupees that it made or whatever, whoever bought that one ticket and allowed his son or his daughter to do what he or she wanted, then he's come home, I think. Raju succeeded. So, the thing is that films can set a trend, it can, it can subtly bring about. Let me give you another example. I was, I was in talks with a very, I will not take names, but I was in talks with a very big industrial house, which is into entertainment also now. And uh, the young executives came to meet me and they said, we'd like you to make a film for our company. So I said, I have certain plans, you know, and this is what I think and this is what I believe and this is how we should go about it and this is my vision and this is what is wrong and this is... So hold on, hold on. Can you set up a meeting four or five days later with my boss? I said, yeah, sure. So I met the next person, the superior person. And uh, I said the same thing all over again. He interrupted me about 60% of this. Says, Sanjay, what you're talking is making a lot of sense. Can you meet us three days later? I'll fix up a meeting with my senior. And I went up five meetings after that. And literally with this right-hand man of the top guy. So it's like meeting Amit Shah. We will go to that big office building which is owned by the company. This is the center of that place, uh, South Bombay. And I will get him to meet you for 20 minutes. You tell him. So I said, okay. Went and sat down there and we sat together for an hour and 45 minutes and he came to lead me to the elevator when I left. So I was telling him that you guys are a company which is, I'm hearing and I'm zero knowledge about the business world and the finance world. I was just asking them what CII stands for. That's how you become filmmakers. Eh? By logic of elimination, if you don't have filmmaker you CII. But, um, so I said, I have no knowledge, but I hear that your company is all 30,000 crores and 50,000 crores and into every kind of business and stuff like that. So you all are making films. One film that you all make will be 50 crores ka budget, 70 crores ka budget. Let's presume that you all will make 10 films like that a year. So 50 crores ka 10 films is 500 films, or 500 crores. Out of them, normally one or two or three will be a hit. Let's presume that all 10 are hits. So they all will give you back 100% profit. So you'll make 1,000 crores. Let's say you make 200% profit, you make 1,500 crores. So 1,000 crores profit, 500 crores return. I said, you all are going through all this trouble. I've met your nearly every senior management person and I'm meeting you for 1,000 crore profit. 
I've heard you all are running the country. That's what, that was the 20th minute when he looked at his watch and he passed a message on that, I'll be late for my next meeting. I said, what is it? What are you doing? It's not going to make a difference. The reason why you should be making films and the reason why I should be making films and the reason you should be listening to what I'm saying is because through the films that you make, you will be able to manipulate evil word, but the truth. You will be able to manipulate the minds of the consumers of your various products. You will be able to put your company's image in a different light. Imagine if your company was making motorcycles and you all produce doom. It would have been a plan on your part that the sales will increase. It would have been a plan on your part that the shapes of motorcycles will change. You all have all looked. There was a stupid, dumb looking thing with a fat tank and, and four stroke engine. And today you have the F2s and the phasers and the sleek names, the shape, the fairings, everything's changed. That's all post doom. Bikes used to cost, I, I bought an RX 100 for 18,000 bucks in 87. Today a bike costs 90,000, one and a half lakhs. You can get a bike for four lakhs, Indian bikes. So if that company was into motorcycle manufacturing, they could have affected and manipulated the minds of the consumers to, it becomes more aspirational. Oh, this is a lifestyle thing, it's not just a mode of transport. Coming back to another example that I keep thinking, this is my personal opinion, it's not necessary that it's the gospel truth. One of the most, the best marketed product in the world is America. The product is America, the US of A. And the credit, the agency, the credit goes to the agency, that's Hollywood. Every time they make a film, this is the biggest country in the world, the best country in the world. When Superman's father decides to send the boy into that little small thing, he lands in the USA. Why couldn't he land in Burma, yeah? <laughs> Why couldn't he land in Sri Lanka? He lands in, they have World Series out there. World Series, mein their own people are playing against each other. And they have a World Series there. The greatest country in the world. Every film is normally all the time saying the greatest country in the world. They have sold their country to the rest of the world, marketed it. They've marketed their own country to their own people. Mainly, mainly because of Hollywood. Mainly because of Hollywood. Our perception of the World War II, most urban uh, Indian uh, youth, would be from the films that we've seen and the comic books that we've read and how the, world, the allies were losing and then the United States decided to enter the war and 1945 we won the war and we drove the Germans back. So that is a thing to keep in mind when we're looking at Bollywood as the provocateur of uh, positive disruption and films and in relation with that. So, Positive disruption from what I understand is already happening. How do we escalate it? Bollywood can play its part subtly setting trends of all kinds. There are many like Rajkumar Hirani, many of them. There's Intia Ali, there's Anurag Basu, there's Anurag Kashyap, Karan Jawar, Aditya Chopra. There's people who have the brains and the sensibility. They will continue to point the people in the general direction of goodness. Sometimes they will show a mirror to society and shame them into change. But it is the youth of this country that can convey to the filmmakers, convey to us that we, we will not lose money if we take a little bit of a risk. It is the youth of the country. What else can the youth do? I was just part of something which is called uh, IMFF. India Mobile Film Festival. Just Thursday I finished off the event. I was the chief jury person and there was a lot of other people with me. And we announced it and it was done by this company called Talent House India. And the competition was uh, for short films to be made only on, shot only on mobile phones. And they were expecting some 50, 60 entries. They said, sir, aapka naam aa jayega, to 200, 150, 200 ho jayenge. We got 400 film entries. 
I went and saw each and every one of those films. There were three categories, nano films, which was one to two minute duration, micro films, two to five minute duration, and short films, which were five to 10 minute duration. And this is made from 40 cities the entries came from. We had not even heard of some of the names of the cities and the small towns. People, because mobile is there in every person's hand. And look at the films that I saw. I'll tell you about one film. There was a short film. It was in the nano category. It was a winner outright. It was a young 17-year-old boy. Kumar, this is really worth listening to. A 17-year-old boy made this film. He played both the roles of the characters that he had in the film. One was a father and a son. And they both are sitting opposite each other. He had no special effects, so he just shot them separately. He even had the good director's brain to shoot the father's character from a slightly lowish thing so he could seem dominating and the son's was a little topish so that it looked as if he was smaller. And he's, he's uh, you can see his marks that he's got and it says 12 standard pass, good marks. And then he, the father pushes a box to him and there's a chit, chits inside so he picks up one chit and it opens up and he says, it's, it says engineering. He looks at his father, there's no dialogue. And the father says, so he opens another one, they says engineering, third one, engineering, fourth one, engineering, fifth one, engineering, till he empties out the whole box. So he's looking at his father, he's like wondering what's happening. His father says, one sec, then he removes another chit and gives it to him. He opens it, it's written Jhaduwala. <laughs> and the film suddenly ends there. So I said, this is a winner, and I said that what Raju Hirani took three hours to say, this, this young boy said in, a minute and a half, 90 seconds. There was a film that, that there was a young mother, uh, this is the winner in the microfilm category, cat category. The young mother playing with a child, making a half tea, jute mood ka play acting. And then the, has, the father comes home and the mobile is put down because of, it was being shot like a selfie, the video. And then the kid picks up the mobile phone and is playing with it, gurgling away. It's a one and a half, two year old baby. And in that moment of the camera, you can see the f husband and the wife, the father and the mother having a conversation. And he says, ha, I've come home, where's the food? So she says, oh, I didn't make any food because I thought you will be late. So you'll call me and then I'll make the food. It'll get cold otherwise. And he's letting off his team, says, oh, office maybe mujhe sunna padta, abhi haa pe bhi sunna padta. And very quickly, in an amateurish way, it escalated into a fight. And it's being continuously covered by the baby's movements of the camera, which is taking the parents in and out of frame, and it's just going all over the place. You can hear the soundtrack, and it escalates into a fight where the man gets up, comes towards the, his wife, the mother, and the, cam the film fades out to black, and you can hear the sound of a slap. And then straight away it comes a super, domestic violence, whatever, 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 children are witness to it. And I was blown away by it. I said, my God, you can show this film in the United Nations, you can show this film in the White House, and the President of the United States will have to stand up and give an ovation. Because it is unbelievable, and it is, and I called the guy on stage and I said, you don't even know, you yourself don't know what kind of a film you made. So what is it that the youth can do? I think, let us all know this, films should no longer mean Bollywood not the Indian film industry, which makes more than 100 films uh, uh, a year. It's the biggest film industry in the world. Today, films can be made by anyone, and it can be exhibited anywhere, on the YouTube, on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, and forwarded on a WhatsApp, forwarded on any other things that are there. People are inventing it every day. Because that is the way that you will be able to shock, shame, enlighten, inspire, and make sure that people see them, and even if one person is affected, even if one person is affected, it'll make a difference. I have a friend of mine, uh, again, she's a housewife, but she's on the board of directors in her husband's company, which is into shrimps and everything, and another who's in uh, retail and uh, the pantaloon group, future group. But they both have together, my friend's wife and another friend of ours, are involved in this thing called Have a Heart Foundation, which is for children who are born with uh, CHD, congenital heart disease. And they found that it's a charity which is really worth getting into. And without going into the details of it, they said, Sanjay, please, yaar, ek film bana de So I said, okay, I'll try to do it, you know. 
what budget do you have? I said, we have no money. I said, let me think of something. Said, Tell me more about this. So they said, no, the child has no abnormality as such, but cannot do any physical activities of any kind, right from the time that the child uh, gasps for breath when breastfeeding to not being able to go to school, run, swim, play, cycle, nothing. And then the lifespan is about 15 to 16 years, if nothing is done. But corrective surgery, costing as little as 60,000 rupees to two and a half lakh rupees, can make the child from absolutely abnormal to absolutely normal. So I said, and within two minutes, I was getting a script in my head. And I said, what if there's a story like this? Yeah, great. So I tried to budget the film. It came to one and a half lakhs. I called somebody else. It came to 80,000. I called somebody else. It came to 60,000. And I said, there's got to be some other way of doing this. And we landed up making the film. And till now, till today, we have shot, edited, done the original background score. We're waiting to do sound mixing. And we're going to get a celebrity to do the voiceover. I've spent 7,000 rupees. And it's going to be on not on television because that you can't afford. It's just going to go on WhatsApp, Facebook, and and forwarding through this thing. And it, and that girl, my friend's wife, she'll carry it with her when she travels anywhere to the U.S. or whatever. And she'll have a little show reel kind of thing. And she'll gather some people at a dinner and say, please give some money. And they've already helped 300 children. And all the children that are being helped are from really poor families. So what I'm saying is that if if we understand and we just open up the fact that if we are going on saying and choping about the fact that India is the country with the biggest youth population in the world or whatever, that the power to bring about change is in various ways. One of them is to get involved in the filmmaking itself. No matter how short, no matter how uh, you, inconsequential you think it's going to be, inspire somebody, sponsor a film, do something, communicate via Facebook, share a film that you've seen on, uh, uh, I saw a fantastic uh, short film on Facebook, I, I think I shared it also, I don't know, I just pressed some button and it got shared. I'm not like very tech savvy, uh, despite having made Doom. Um, it's an aircraft and there's a colored man sitting on the window seat. Anyone seen it? And uh, a white lady comes and sits next to uh, the colored man. And she and said, foreign language they're speaking in, and she calls the stewardess, excuse me, but uh, I, is there another seat available? Because I cannot be sitting next to this kind of person. So she said, I'm sorry, the economy class is full. full. She said, no, no, I cannot absolutely sit. So, okay, let me check with the captain. She comes back. She says, uh, I told the captain, and he's arranged uh, for one seat available in the first class because uh, he doesn't want, he agrees that he doesn't want anybody to be sitting next to a despicable person. And she begins to get up, the passenger, and she, the stewardess makes her sit down and takes the colored person and takes him to first class. And it just stops there. And, and so it's, it's about using your brain and in, innovation and creativity it just with a little bit of a twist and a bend. I, my film, I'll tell you, the film opens up with uh, a kid sitting in a balcony and it's about 6.30 a.m., the supers come and he's looking at the life going by and the cycle wala comes in the morning, gives milk, the bread wala comes, the, uh, the uh, people are jogging, people are moving for the morning walk, then a bunch of kids leave for school and he's just watching, there's a girl doing yoga so he's looking at her and, uh, and, and the music is also not very sad or anything like that and, and at some point there's people push, there's a guy who runs and catches a bus to go to work because he's late, there are some three, four street guys who push a car to start because it's not working. And you're going on showing the different times of the day. It's 12.30, 1.30, 2.30. And then those kids come back from school. And then at some point, I start the voiceover. That's, this is Vasu. He's seven years old. All day he sits in his balcony and he looks at the world go by. But as he sees the world go by, his life too is passing him by because he suffers from CHD. He cannot do even one of the physical activities that you've been seeing for the last 45 seconds. Because and this is the thing, statistics, 1.5 <laughs> lakhs children a year are born with this problem here. Yeah. And then the details of the website, of the company, whatever, whatever. So it's, a, it's an idea that just comes to you. So if, if we can somehow 
be involved in, in making them, writing them, sponsoring them, provoking them, then the films can change and then what will happen is the, the, if this goes on for about two years, three years and suddenly the film industry and the filmmakers start seeing that there are young kids, youth of the country between the ages 15 to 30 are making these kind of films or are being uh, involved in these kind of films, then they will, then they will uh, get the message that, oh, the youth is, is uh, uh, open to seeing different kinds of films and then Bollywood will start making changes in their content because one Rangde Basanti cannot change everything. So let it become a movement and when that happens, the profit-seeking vultures from the Bollywood will follow suit. They will say, ah, this is what the youth wants. Let's give it to them. And then there will be positive disruption. I'd like to say thank you again once to Mr. Bachchan. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay. It's interesting to know that Bollywood, cinema at large, and filmmaking, if driven by the force of youth today, can provoke, shape, shift the paradigm of thought in our society. And on that note, YI Pune has had their first venture in filmmaking, and I hope all of you will wait till the end of the day to see our in-house production. Uh, can I now open the floor to a Q&A? Uh, hi, Sanjay. Uh, so, uh, I, uh, I thought your talk was, uh, was phenomenal. Um, my question to you is that uh, what I did not get uh, or understand from your talk is, do you regret making Doom? No, not at all. Are you proud yeah. of it? Hello, check. No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. No, no, absolutely not. It's, it's, it's probably... It's the, it's the curse that, uh, you can't hear? It's the curse, it's the curse, uh, you know, that uh, in future, any film that I make will be compared to that and I'll never be able to better it. Uh, Ramesh Sipi never bettered on Shole. Mm -hmm. People say that Aditya Chopra has never bettered on Dilwale Dulanya Le Jayenge. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the challenge. I don't regret it. Uh, we, I was clear about, uh, when we were making Dhoom, let me just, uh, what's your name? Nilesh. Nilesh. Yeah. Uh, Nilesh, we were very clear and if you were to see the film again or if you were to recall when you were seeing the film, that, that there was no, uh, no point in the film where John Abraham's character Kabir is being glorified. Con I, I kept on being very conscious of the fact that it's a very clinical uh, observation on, on my eye, that's a camera which is telling the story and uh, somewhere down the line the message does come through that uh, that if, if, if you bura kaam karoge to ye natija hoga you will have to go off the cliff in the end and die on the other hand though it was you also had a positive uh, character in it uh, uday chopra who is also a writer so so who's, that, also a? who's also a bike rider, right? So, huh. so yeah. uh, I don't know. I mean, there yeah, were positive traits. Riding bikes traits. is not a bad thing. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Oh, well, anyway, Robin, my Robin question is, is a bad thing. What John was doing, right? Uh, stealing, right? Uh, yeah, stealing yeah. is a bad thing. Yeah. So I said, if you steal, then you'll have to go off the cliff in the end. Right. Uh, no, just another question. Uh, so, so after you made Doom, the sale of bikes uh, in the next uh, financial year went up with 25%. Uh, uh, what do you think after, uh, happened after Ragini MMS was made? I wouldn't know. Were there more Roger? rapes or something? I don't know. Probably. So, so this is, this is a, actually you've triggered off a very interesting thing. Art imitates life or life imitates art. Uh, it's, it's going to, and the original is that art imitates life. So if, if a filmmaker, a write, film director or writer has seen it, heard of it or read it somewhere, then he'll be able to recreate it for the film. What happens out here is that the filmmaker with an intention wants to show that this is what happened, 
but this should not happen. But the risk out here is that some of the people are not even aware that this kind of thing can happen and they say, oh my God, oh, like this can happen. Let me go and make it happen. So that's always going to be that fine line that you're trying to uh, see. That is why I think you, the film uh, uh, makers in India, uh, they wear blinders and we just focus on the fact that what is it that the public wants? Let's make it. Let's let the producer make money. And like, and I said at the very beginning, it's, it's, it is a business. There's no filmmaker who's taken it upon himself to bring about social change. And the ones who take it upon themselves, there's about 200 people going to see their films. You know. The thing is that you have to be clever like a Rajkumar Hirani, where in the mode of entertainment, as, you know, as much as people look down upon or the, the young, uh, hip, cool crowd of India uh, from all cities, uh, look down upon Suraj Bharjatiya's films, okay, Viva, oh, he's, uh, she's saying Jal and how they're talking and this and that. But, but his films do inculcate values. Like I said, I'm seriously that, that uh, everything that uh, my sense of good and bad, you know, it's, it's so beautiful when, when you're watching a film with young children uh, and in, uh, I don't know whether that happens today, but when I was a kid or some, uh, when I was about 15 and there'd be a four-year-old watching a film or a six-year-old, Uncle, that's, he's a good, bhaiya, wo, he's a good man or bad? In the beginning, they want to know. Wo acha hai ki bura hai. So we say, this is, he's acha. So then, okay, so then they say, oh, this is acha, they're making a note of it. So I actually genuinely, um, as, a, as a 70s kid, got affected by uh, Amitabh Bachchan's characters. That this is how you, uh, this is how a friend should die for, uh, Jay should die for Viru. If I had to die, I would die like that. This is how I would sacrifice my love in like Mukaddar ka Sikandar. If I was a bad guy, then it would need my brother and my mother to do this to me like it happened in Divar, then only I'll become a bad guy. You know, so all those things, you know, if my dad uh, said that I will uh, uh, not save you when you get kidnapped, then this is how I'll be when I was in Shakti. So it, all the good things, bad things, the gray areas all came from there. And today I'm trying to be an ideal father, an ideal husband. Is, is because of, of, of my sense of right and wrong that I got only from films. The books that I read were all, all pulp fiction. So, so I don't regret making uh, Doom, but, uh, but yeah, sometimes, you know, there was a, a very funny incident that when uh, I heard it happened outside Ahmedabad, within a week of after Doom released, four guys on motorcycles, on motorcycles went to a gas station and uh, they, they said, stick them up. And they robbed the gas station of whatever, five, eight, ten thousand bucks. And all four of them drove off and the last guy uh, tried to do a wheelie and show off and he fell down <laughs> and they got caught. <laughs> so, but this was not reported. Hi, uh, when you make films on uh, political scenarios, do you get uh, threats from the political parties and how do you deal with it? I'm sorry, I can't hear. When you make films like Sarkar, which is based on the political scenario, do you get threats from the government? I personally stay away from all these kind of films. The minute a script is narrated to me, which potentially I can predict there will be a call coming, I say no. But I would presume that uh, there is some kind of interaction that must be happening because as much as we say freedom of speech and all that stuff in our country, it's not, it's not actually uh, existing. So you might, it might not be a threat, but it'll be a subtle call or don't make this film. You know, I mean, there was a film in the 70s that got banned uh, because the government then didn't want it to release it. So it's called Andi. So there's a lot of stuff that, I mean, this is, someone wants to make a film in Indira Gandhi, but I don't think that person was able to make it till now. They've got a ready script and they, want to, they wanted to cast, I think, one of the actresses. So it's a, it's a, it's a tough job, yeah, because you, you don't know sometimes, you know, where you'll get that call from. But I stay away from it. I keep it simple. Hi, Sanjay. Uh, I'm Abhigna from Mysore. Uh, my question is, after making uh, Doom, that is Doom 1, 2 and 3. I made only 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, so I'm sure uh, now the money part is over. 
So is there uh, any movie that you want to do on social reforms? Uh, if you want to do, what would be the topic? I think, I think topic-wise, most of the stuff has been touched upon, you know. Um, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Raj Kapoor. He, he touched topics like uh, widow remarriage in films like Prem Rogue and all that stuff, and he tried to camouflage it with entertainment. Uh, I'd like to do something for children and education, I think, taking a leaf out of what uh, Meher just said. Uh, that there should be something uh, which will make a child want to study. There's, there's, I think that there's one big problem in our country because of the sheer number of people is that there's a lot of people who are unaware that they ought to study or had, ought to have an education. Um, so, and, and it just is, a, is an extra hand you know, there are families who are having children just to have an extra hand at labor and so as soon as the child becomes seven or eight, they work and they uh, earn more money. So somewhere down the line to have an effect on, uh, on, on children and education and to make a child want to study. That, that would be what I would like to do. But again, it has to be put into the entertaining Sanjay, good evening. Sanjay, good evening. Sandal from Erod, uh, We, as you say, we business people, when we pay more, we try to extract more work. And you, we saw that you handled the top two stars who are paid very high in doom. How do you extract work from those people? Like Aishwarya <laughs> Rai and Vipasha Bashu. Pay more and how do you extract more? It's booming a little bit. You're asking me how to extract work from these actors who are very highly paid. Yeah. But why are you under the impression that they, they are not normal people? I mean, it's, it's like, it's like you're, you're hired to do a job and especially in this generation and they have always been, they, they will do the job that they've been hired to do and they do, it, they do a damn good job of it. They work hard, they come on time, they go through a lot of difficulties, they go through a lot of pain. And uh, most of the times you don't have to handle or get work out of them or ex extract work out of them as if they are reluctant. No, there's a contract, I mean there's an agreement, you shake hands, you work. But uh, what you might have to deal with is a little bit of an ego or, or some uh, tantrums or some pampering that you have to do. Uh, there'll be two actresses in the film. We have hired uh, a personal trainer for one actress because she's going to have, uh, she wants a personal trainer. And the other one gets to know that, oh, you've got a personal trainer, then even I want one. Why is that makeup man, uh, she's getting a makeup man who's more expensive and mine is less. So you have to handle those kind of things, which are egos, which I think you have to do in any uh, line of work. You know, if, if, if someone's in uh, sales, then you have to go and please the person who's in the purchase department of that uh, company or factory or whatever. So it, egos you're handling, it's people management at the end of the day. It, you have to be good at people management, especially when you're a director. I'll tell you a story about uh, Subhash Gai, he was making Saudagar. Raj Kumar and Dilip Kumar, both mega stars. In the morning, Raj Kumar will say, Jani, have lunch with me. Uh, Dilip Kumar will say, Are Subhash, bhai, have lunch with me. So Subhash guy would put his hand up and say, Aaj mera <laughs> Because if he has lunch with one guy, the other guy will get upset. So he said, mera upas. So you have to learn and be tactful. But otherwise, they're very professional, very professional. I, I was doing special effects with Rithik uh, for his makeup uh, for Dhoom 2, where he was doing all those, um, the janitor and the, the other things. It would take him five hours and six hours. When he was the queen in the beginning, we made him play the queen only. So it would take him six hours, so he would come at six in the morning and I'd be able to take my first shot with him at 12.30. And uh, when, when you have that kind of prosthetic makeup on, you can't uh, chew. You can't, you can't chew because then it cracks the makeup. So he can only sip on juice, so he's, he's having liquids the whole day. Protein shakes through the straw and all that stuff. And we finish off at 12.30 in the night and then he takes two hours to remove the makeup. 
same thing mr bachan through went through in pa so so it's a lot yeah, in fact it's the hardest work <coughs> directors can have the cooler and everything but the actors have to be there in the heat i've heard a story about hema malani when she was shooting for a film called kranti there was a song in the on the boat zindagi ki na toote ladi and the, um, the one or two guys are prisoners and she's singing in the rain and the the police uh, the the english army is making them sing and then they ran out of water the rain water and uh, they were shooting in a place called china creek so at 5 o'clock how they going to send another order for a tanker of water that will come with the rain water for the nozzles and everything so they just filled up from the china creek itself which is drainage and sewage from that area and they told him amalini that ma'am we can't help it and we're going to just try to put a cloth and get the water in she said okay so she's having that water fall on her as if it's the pure rain from the sky you see her expression and all that stuff but it's shit water <laughs> so they go through a lot of uh, yeah thank okay, one, you one last question anyone yeah Hi Sanjay, it's Sachin from ISA. Uh, <clears throat> I kind of speak for everyone here. We were really impressed uh, with uh, how uh, open and honest you were with your speech. And uh, quickly, to give you a chance uh, to quickly close uh, your speech, you started off being absolutely dismissive of the fact that Bollywood cannot be a provocator of positive disruption, and then you said what Bollywood does is essentially only start trends. So, do you foresee Bollywood moving that trend and actually making it a significant provocator sometime in the future? if you do what do you think is going to be the biggest motivator to bollywood industry in itself to become more of a provocator than just starting trends i don't understand the question <laughs> so you started off being pretty dismissive of the fact that yeah, bollywood yeah. cannot become a provocator take it offline guys take it offline okay um we were very happy to announce the launch of um, why i merchandise and mr sanjay has been very kind to model it for us so so we've got the bollywood launch of why i merchandise guys a big round of applause it's going to be all over our social media our website everything feel free to take snaps tweet whatever you guys like sanjay please wear it for us <laughs> no budget low budget low budget sir low budget yep woo Most of the places film people go, na, log kapde farte hain. Yahan pe kapde pehna ke bhej rahe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>